chapters eleven through seventeen one of the egyptian book of the dead by a e wallace budge this librivox recording is in the public domain chapter eleven vignette this chapter is without a vignette in both the theban and saita recensions text the chapter of a man coming forth against his enemies in the underworld the overseer of the palace the chancellor-in-chief new triumphant saith o thou god who eatest thine arm i have departed from thy road i am ra and have come forth from the horizon against mine enemies and he hath granted to me that they shall not escape from me i have made an offering and my hand is like that of the lord of the ureret crown i have lifted up my feet even as the urii goddesses rise up my overthrow shall not be accomplished and as for mine enemy he hath been given over into my power and he shall not be delivered from me i shall stand up like horus and i shall sit down like ptah and i shall be mighty like thoth and i shall be strong like tem i shall therefore walk with my legs i shall speak with my mouth i shall go round about in quest of mine enemy and as he hath been delivered over to me he shall not escape from me chapter twelve vignette this chapter is without a vignette in both theban and saita recensions text the chapter of going into and of coming forth from the underworld the osiris new triumphant saith hymns of praise to thee o ra thou keeper of secret gates which are on the brow of the god seb by the side of the balance of ra wherein he lifteth up right and truth maat day by day in very truth i have burst through the earth grant thou unto me that i may go forward and arrive at the state of old age chapter thirteen or one hundred and twenty one vignette this chapter is without a vignette in both the theban and saita recensions text the chapter of entering into and of coming forth from amentet osiris the scribe nebseni victorious saith mortals i go in like the hawk and i come forth like the benu bird the morning star of ra may a path be made for me whereby i may enter into peace into the beautiful amentet and may i be by the lake of horus and may i lead the greyhounds of horus and may a path be made for me whereby i may enter in and adore osiris the lord of life in the theban recension this chapter appears without a rubric but in the saita recension as given in the turin papyrus we have the following rubric this chapter is to be recited over a ring made of ankum flowers which shall be laid on the right ear of the khu together with another ring wrapped up in a strip of byssus cloth whereon the name of osiris alf ankh victorious born of the lady shirt amsu victorious shall be done in writing on the day of sepulture chapter fourteen vignette this chapter has no vignette either in the theban or in the saita recension text the chapter of putting an end to any shame that may be in the heart of the god for the chief deputy of amen the scribe mesemneter victorious who saith hymns of praise to thee o thou god who makest the moment to advance thou dweller among mysteries of every kind thou guardian of the word which i speak behold the god hath shame of me but let my faults be washed away and let them fall upon both hands of the god of right and truth do away utterly with the transgression which is in me together with my wickedness and sinfulness o god of right and truth may this god be at peace with me do away utterly with the obstacles which are between thee and me o thou to whom offerings are made in the divine city of kanur grant thou that i may bring to thee the offerings which will make peace between thee and men whereon thou livest and that i also may live thereon be thou at peace with me and do away utterly with all the shame of me which thou hast in thy heart because of me 
chapter fifteen vignette ani standing with both hands raised in adoration before ra hawk-headed and seated in a boat floating upon the sky on a platform in the bows sits the god herupakrat harpocrates with his right hand raised to his mouth which he touches with one finger the side of the boat is ornamented with feathers of maat and with an unchat the handles of the oars and the tops of the rowlocks are in the form of hawks heads and on the blades of the oars are utchats text a hymn of praise to ra when he riseth upon the horizon and when he setteth in the land of light osiris the scribe ani saith homage to thee o ra when thou risest as tem herukuti tem hamarchus thou art adored by me when thy beauties are before mine eyes and when thy radiance falleth upon my body thou goest forth to thy setting in the sectet boat with fair winds and thy heart is glad the heart of the matet boat rejoiceth thou stridest over the heavens in peace and all thy foes are cast down the never-resting stars sing hymns of praise unto thee and the stars which rest and the stars which never fail glorify thee as thou sinkest to rest in the horizon of manu o thou who art beautiful at morn and at eve o thou lord who livest and art established o my lord homage to thee o thou who art ra when thou risest and tem when thou settest in beauty thou risest and shinest on the back of thy mother nut o thou who art crowned king of the gods nut doeth homage unto thee and everlasting and never changing order embraceth thee at morn and at eve thou stridest over the heaven being glad of heart and the lake of testes is content thereat the sabal fiend hath fallen to the ground his arms and his hands have been hacked off and the knife hath severed the joints of his body ra hath a fair wind the sectet boat goeth forth and sailing along it cometh into port the gods of the south and of the north of the west and of the east praise thee o thou divine substance from whom all forms of life come into being thou sendest forth the word and the earth is flooded with silence o thou only one who didst dwell in heaven before ever the earth and the mountains came into existence o runner o lord o only one thou maker of things which are thou hast fashioned the tongue of the company of the gods thou hast produced whatsoever cometh forth from the waters and thou springest up from them over the flooded land of the lake of horus let me snuff the air which cometh forth from thy nostrils and the north wind which cometh forth from thy mother nut o oh, make thou to be glorious my shining form ku o oh, osiris make thou to be divine my soul ba thou art worshipped in peace or in setting o lord of the gods thou art exalted by reasoning of thy wondrous works shine thou with thy rays of light upon my body day by day upon me osiris the scribe the teller of the divine offerings of all the gods the overseer of the granary of the lords of abtu abadas the royal scribe in truth who loveth thee ani victorious in peace chapter fifteen hymn and litany to osiris vignette osiris ani the royal scribe in truth who loveth ra the scribe and teller of the divine offerings of all the gods and osiris thuthu the lady of the house the singing woman of amen standing in adoration before the god osiris who accompanied by the goddess isis stands in a shrine made in the form of a funeral chest text praise be unto thee o osiris lord of eternity unnifer herukuti hamarchus whose forms are manifold and whose attributes are majestic ptah sekotem in anu heliopolis the lord of the hidden place and the creator of het ka ptah memphis and of the gods therein the guide of the underworld whom the gods glorify when thou settest in nut isis embraceth thee in peace and she driveth away the fiends from the mouth of thy paths thou turnest thy face upon amentet and thou makest the earth to shine as with refined copper 
those who have lain down the dead rise up to see thee they breathe the air and they look upon thy face when the disk riseth on its horizon their hearts are at peace inasmuch as they behold thee o thou who art eternity and everlastingness litany homage to thee o lord of starry deities in anu and of heavenly beings in ker abba thou god unti who art more glorious than the gods who are hidden in anu o grant thou unto me a path whereon i may pass in peace for i am just and true i have not spoken lies wittingly nor have i done aught with deceit homage to thee o an in antis heru kuti hamarchus with long strides thou stridest over heaven o heru kuti o grant thou unto me a path whereon i may pass in peace for i am just and true i have not spoken lies wittingly nor have i done aught with deceit homage to thee o soul of everlastingness thou soul who dwellest in tatu un nefer son of nut thou art lord of akert o grant thou unto me a path wherein i may pass in peace for i am just and true i have not spoken lies wittingly nor have i done aught with deceit homage to thee in thy dominion over tatu the uret crown is established upon thy head thou art the one who maketh the strength which protecteth himself and thou dwellest in peace in tatu o grant thou unto me a path whereon i may pass in peace for i am just and true i have not spoken lies wittingly nor have i done aught with deceit homage to thee o lord of the acacia tree the secker boat is set upon its sledge thou turnest back the fiend the worker of evil and thou causest the uchat to rest upon its seat o grant thou unto me a path whereon i may pass in peace for i am just and true i have not spoken lies wittingly nor have i done aught with deceit homage to thee o thou who art mighty in thine hour thou great and mighty prince dweller in anrut lord of eternity and creator of everlastingness thou art the lord of sudan behenen heracleopolis magna o grant thou unto me a path whereon i may pass in peace for i am just and true i have not spoken lies wittingly nor have i done aught with deceit homage to thee o thou who restest upon right and truth thou art the lord of abtu abadas and thy limbs are joined unto ta tchetsertet thou art he to whom fraud and guile are hateful o grant thou unto me a path whereon i may pass in peace for i am just and true i have not spoken lies wittingly nor have i done aught with deceit homage to thee o thou who art within thy boat thou bringest hapi the nile forth from his source the light shineth upon thy body and thou art the dweller in nekan o grant thou unto me a path whereon i may pass in peace for i am just and true i have not spoken lies wittingly nor have i done aught with deceit homage to thee o creator of the gods thou king of the north and of the south o osiris victorious one ruler of the world in thy gracious seasons thou art the lord of the celestial world o grant thou unto me a path whereon i may pass in peace for i am just and true i have not spoken lies wittingly nor have i done aught with deceit hymn to ra text a hymn of praise to ra when he riseth in the eastern part of heaven those who are in his train rejoice and lo osiris ani victorious saith hail thou disc thou lord of rays who risest on the horizon day by day shine thou with thy beams of light upon the face of osiris ani who is victorious for he singeth hymns of praise unto thee at dawn and he maketh thee to set at eventide with words of adoration may the soul of osiris ani the triumphant one come forth with thee into heaven may he go forth in the matet boat may he come into port in the sectet boat and may he cleave his path among the never resting stars in the heavens osiris ani being in peace and in triumph adoreth his lord the lord of eternity saying homage to thee o hero kuti hamarchus who art the god kapara the self-created when thou risest on the horizon and sheddest thy beams of light upon the lands of the north and of the south thou art beautiful yea beautiful and all the gods rejoice when they behold thee the king of heaven the goddess nept anut 
is stablished upon thy head and her uria of the south and of the north are upon thy brow she taketh up her place before thee the god thoth is stablished in the bows of thy boat to destroy utterly all thy foes those who are in the tuat underworld come forth to meet thee and they bow in homage as they come towards thee to behold thy beautiful image and i have come before thee that i may be with thee to behold thy disc every day may i not be shut up in the tomb may i not be turned back may the limbs of my body be made new again when i view thy beauties even as are those of all thy favoured ones because i am one of those who worship thee whilst i lived upon earth may i come in unto the land of eternity may i come even unto the everlasting land for behold o my lord this hast thou ordained for me and lo osiris ani triumphant in peace the triumphant one saith homage to thee o thou who risest in thy horizon as ra thou reposest upon law which changeth not nor can it be altered thou passest over the sky and every face watcheth thee and thy course for thou hast been hidden from their gaze thou dost show thyself at dawn at an even time day by day the sectet boat wherein is thy majesty goeth forth with might thy beams shine upon all faces the number of thy red and yellow rays cannot be known nor can thy bright beams be told the lands of the gods and the eastern lands of punt must be seen ere that which is hidden in thee may be measured alone and by thyself thou dost manifest thyself when thou comest into being above new the sky may ani advance even as thou dost advance may he never cease to go forward even as thy majesty ceaseth not to go forward even though it be for a moment for with strides dost thou in one little moment pass over the spaces which would need hundreds of thousands and millions of years for man to pass over this thou doest and then dost thou sink to rest thou puttest an end to the hours of the night and let us count them even thou thou endest them in thine own appointed season and the earth becometh light thou settest thyself before thy handiwork in the likeness of ra thou risest in the horizon osiris the scribe ani triumphant declareth his praise of thee when thou shinest and when thou risest at dawn he crieth in his joy at thy birth thou art crowned with the majesty of thy beauties thou mouldest thy limbs as thou dost advance and thou bringest them forth without birth pangs in the form of ra as thou dost rise up into the upper air grant thou that i may come unto the heaven which is everlasting and under the mountain where dwell thy favoured ones may i be joined unto those shining beings holy and perfect who are in the underworld and may i come forth with them to behold thy beauties when thou shinest at eventide and goest to thy mother new thou dost place thyself in the west and my two hands are raised in adoration of thee when thou settest as a living being behold thou art the maker of eternity and thou art adored when thou settest in the heavens i have given my heart unto thee without wavering o thou who art mightier than the gods osiris ani triumphant saith a hymn of praise to thee o thou who risest like unto gold and who dost flood the world with light on the day of thy birth thy mother giveth thee birth upon her hand and thou dost give light unto the course of the disc o thou great light who shinest in the heavens thou dost strengthen the generations of men with the nile flood and thou dost cause gladness in all lands and in all cities and in all the temples thou art glorious by reason of thy splendours and thou makest strong thy ka double with hue and chechfau foods o thou who art the mighty one of victories thou who art the power of all powers who dost make strong thy throne against evil fiends who art glorious in majesty in the sectet boat and who art exceeding mighty in the atet boat make thou glorious osiris ani with victory in the underworld grant thou that in the nether world he may be without evil 
i pray thee to put away his faults behind thee grant thou that he may be one of thy venerable servants who are with the shining ones may he be joined unto the souls which are in ta tchertet and may he journey into the second aru by a prosperous and happy decree he the osiris the scribe ani triumphant and the god saith thou shalt come forth into heaven thou shalt pass over the sky thou shalt be joined into the starry deities praises shall be offered unto thee in thy boat thou shalt be hymned in the atet boat thou shalt behold ra within his shrine thou shalt set together with his disc day by day thou shalt see the ant fish when it springeth into being in the waters of turquoise and thou shalt see the abtu fish in his hour it shall come to pass that the evil one shall fall when he layeth a snare to destroy thee and the joints of his neck and of his back shall be hacked asunder ra saileth with the fair wind and the sectet boat draweth on and cometh into port the mariners of ra rejoice and the heart of nept ankh is glad for the enemy of her lord hath fallen to the ground thou shalt behold horus on the standing-place of the pilot of the boat and thoth and maat shall stand one upon each side of him all the gods shall rejoice when they behold ra coming in peace to make the hearts of the shining ones to live and osiris ani victorious the scribe of the divine offerings of the lords of thebes shall be along with them a hymn to the setting sun vignette in this papyrus this chapter is without a vignette text another chapter of the mystery of the tuat underworld and of passing through the unseen netherworld and of seeing the disc when he setteth in amentet when he is adored by the gods and by the khus in the underworld and when the soul which dwelleth in ra is made perfect he is made mighty before tem he is made great before osiris he setteth his terror before the company of the gods who are the guides of the netherworld he maketh long his steps and he maketh his face to enter with that of the great god now every khu for whom these words shall have been said shall come forth by day in any form which he is pleased to take he shall gain power among the gods of the tuat underworld and they shall recognize him as one of themselves and he shall enter in at the hidden gate with power the lady mut hetep victorious singeth hymns of praise to thee saying o ra tem in thy splendid progress thou risest and thou settest as a living being in the glories of the western horizon thou settest in thy territory which is in manu thy ureus is behind thee thy ureus is behind thee homage to thee o thou who art in peace homage to thee o thou who art in peace thou art joined unto the eye of tem and it chooseth its powers of protection to place behind thy members thou goest forth through heaven thou travellest over the earth and thou journeyest onward o luminary the northern and southern halves of heaven come to thee and they bow low in adoration and they pay homage unto thee day by day the gods of amentet rejoice in thy beauties and the unseen places sing hymns of praise unto thee those who dwell in the sectet boat go round about thee and the souls of the east pay homage to thee and when they meet thy majesty they cry come come in peace there is a shout of welcome to thee o lord of heaven and governor of amentet thou art acknowledged by isis who seeth her son in thee the lord of fear the mighty one of terror thou settest as a living being in the hidden place thy father ta tunin raiseth thee up and he placeth both his hands behind thee thou becomest endowed with divine attributes in thy members of earth thou wakest in peace and thou settest in manu grant thou that i may become a being honoured before osiris and that i may come to thee o ra tem i have adored thee therefore do thou for me that which i wish grant thou that i may be victorious in the presence of the company of the gods thou art beautiful o ra in thy western horizon of amentet thou lord of maat thou mighty one of fear thou whose attributes are majestic o thou who art greatly beloved by those who dwell in the tuat underworld thou shinest with thy beams upon the beings that are therein perpetually 
and thou sendest forth thy light upon the path of re stau thou openest up the path of the double lion god thou settest the gods upon their thrones and the khus in their abiding places the heart of naarurf is glad when ra setteth the heart of naarurf is glad when ra setteth hail o ye gods of the land of amentet who make offerings and oblations unto ra tem ascribe ye glory unto him when ye meet him grasp ye your weapons and overthrow ye the fiend seba on behalf of ra and repulse the fiend nebit on behalf of osiris the gods of the land of amentet rejoice and lay hold upon the cords of the sectet boat and they come in peace the gods of the hidden place who dwell in amentet triumph hail thoth who didst make osiris to triumph over his enemies make thou mut hetep victorious to triumph over her enemies in the presence of the great divine sovereign chiefs who live with osiris the lord of life the great god who dwelleth in his disc cometh forth that is horus the avenger of his father unafer ra osiris setteth and the khus who are in the tuat underworld say homage to thee o thou who comest as tem and who comest into being as the creator of the gods homage to thee o thou who comest as the holy soul of souls who dwellest in the horizon homage to thee who art more glorious than all the gods and who illuminest the tuat with thine eye homage to thee who sailest in thy glory and who goest round about in thy disc to the following variant of the above hymn is translated from the text in the papyrus of nektu amen another chapter of the mystery of the tuat underworld and of travelling the unseen places of the underworld of seeing the disc when he setteth in amentet when he is adored by the gods and by the khus of the tuat underworld and when the divine khu which dwelleth within ra is made perfect he setteth his might before ra he setteth his power before tem he setteth his strength before kente amentet and he setteth his terror before the company of the gods the osiris of the gods goeth as leader through the tuat underworld he crasheth through mountains he bursteth through rocks he maketh glad the heart of every khu this composition shall be recited by the deceased when he cometh forth and when he goeth in with the gods among whom he findeth no opposition then shall he come forth by day in all the manifold and exceedingly numerous forms which he may be pleased to take the osiris saith a hymn of praise to ra at eventide when he setteth as a living being in baaka the great god who dwelleth in his disc riseth in his two eyes and all the khus of the underworld receive him in his horizon of amentet they shout praises unto herukuti hamarchus in his form of tem and they sing hymns of joy to ra when they have received him at the head of his beautiful path of emmentop he the deceased saith praise be unto thee o ra praise be unto thee o tem in thy splendid progress thou hast risen and thou hast put on strength and thou settest like a living being amid thy glories in the horizon of amentet in thy domain which is in manu thy uraeus goddess is behind thee thy uraeus goddess is behind thee hail to thee in peace hail to thee in peace thou joinest thyself unto the eye of horus and thou hidest thyself within its secret place it destroyeth for thee all the convulsions of thy face it maketh thee strong with life and thou livest it bindeth its protecting amulets behind thy members thou sailest forth over heaven and thou makest the earth to be established thou joinest thyself unto the upper heaven o luminary the two regions of the east and west make adoration unto thee bowing low and paying homage unto thee and they praise thee day by day the gods of amentet rejoice in thy splendid beauties the hidden places adore thee the aged ones make offerings unto thee and they create for thee protecting powers the divine beings who dwell in the eastern and western horizons transport thee and those who are in the sectet boat convey thee round and about the souls of amentet cry out unto thee and say unto thee when they meet thy majesty life health strength all hail all hail 
when thou comest forth in peace there arise shouts of delight to thee o thou lord of heaven thou prince of amentet thy mother isis embraceth thee and in thee she recogniseth her son the lord of fear the mighty one of terror thou settest as a living being within the dark portal thy father tatunan lifteth thee up and he stretcheth out his two hands behind thee thou becomest a divine being in the earth thou wakest as thou settest and thy habitation is in manu grant thou that i may be venerated before osiris and come thou to me o ra tem since thou hast been adored by me that which i wish thou shalt do for me day by day grant thou victory unto me before the great company of the gods o ra who art doubly beautiful in thy horizon of amentet thou lord of maat who dwellest in the horizon the fear of thee is great thy forms are majestic and the love of thee is great among those who dwell in the underworld a hymn to the setting sun vignette the deceased and his wife standing with both hands raised in adoration before a table of offerings upon which are a libation vase and lotus flowers text a hymn of praise to ra hero kuti ra marcus when he setteth in the western part of heaven he the deceased saith homage to thee o ra who in thy setting art tem heru kuti tem hamarchus thou divine god thou self-created being thou primeval matter from which all things were made when thou appearest in the bows of thy bark men shout for joy at thee o maker of the gods thou didst stretch out the heavens wherein the two eyes might travel thou didst make the earth to be a vast chamber for thy coups so that every man might know his fellow the sectet boat is glad and the matet boat rejoiceth and they greet thee with exultation as thou journeyest along the god nu is content and thy mariners are satisfied the uraeus goddess hath overthrown thine enemies and thou hast carried off the legs of apet thou art beautiful o ra each day and thy mother nut embraceth thee thou settest in beauty and thy heart is glad in the horizon of manu and the holy beings therein rejoice thou shinest there with thy beams o thou great god osiris the everlasting prince the lords of the zones of the tuat in their caverns stretch out their hands in adoration before thy ka double and they cry out to thee and they all come forth in the train of thy form shining brilliantly the hearts of the lords of the tuat are glad when thou sendest forth thy glorious light in amentet their two eyes are directed towards thee and they press forward to see thee and their hearts rejoice when they do see thee thou hearkenest unto the acclamations of those that are in the funeral chest thou doest away with their helplessness and drivest away the evils which are about them thou givest breath to their nostrils and they take hold of the boughs of thy bark in the horizon of manu thou art beautiful each day o ra and may thy mother nut embrace osiris victorious chapter sixteen the scene of which lepsius inadvertently gave the number sixteen and which he regarded as a chapter of the book of the dead is strictly speaking only a vignette intended to accompany the hymn to the rising sun that forms part of the introductory matter of the chapters of the book of the dead which we find in some of the oldest papyri of the theban period in the papyrus of ani we see the sun's disc supported by a pair of arms which emerge from the sign of life this in its turn is supported by the pillar which symbolizes the tree trunk which contained the dead body of osiris this pillar rests upon the horizon on each side of it are three apes typical of the spirits of the dawn adoring the disc on the right is the goddess nephthys and on the left is the goddess isis nephthys kneels upon the symbol of the sunset and isis upon the symbol of the dawn above the whole scene is the vaulted sky in the papyrus of hu nefer the pillar is endowed with human arms and hands which grasp the crook and flail emblematic of osiris reign and rule and the two goddesses are standing upright one says i am thy sister nephthys and the other i am thy sister isis the divine mother the sun is typified by a hawk having a disc encircled by an uraeus upon his head the apes are here seven in number 
four stand in front and three behind above the whole scene is the vaulted sky certain papyri have also vignettes which illustrate the hymns to the setting sun in this case the hawk usually stands upon the emblem of the west while apes and gods adore him in the papyrus of kenna on the right three hawk-headed gods kneel in adoration with their left arms raised and on the left three jackal-headed gods with their right arms raised in adoration below two lion-headed gods with discs on their heads are seated back to back in a cluster of lotus flowers these typify dawn and eventide the goddess isis kneels in adoration before the lion of the dawn and the goddess nephthys before the lion of eventide chapter seventeen vignette ani and his wife seated in a hall he is moving a piece on a draught board two the souls of ani and his wife in the form of human-headed hawks standing upon a pylon-shaped building the bearded soul is described as the soul of osiris three a table of offerings upon which are lotus flowers a libation vase etc four two lions seated back to back and supporting the horizon with the sun's disc over which extends the sky the lion on the right is called seth yesterday and then on the left tau tomorrow five the benu bird and a table of offerings six the mummy of ani on a bier within a funeral shrine at the head and foot are nephthys and isis in the form of hawks beneath the bier are ani's palette variegated marble or glass vessels etc plate eight one the god of million of years on his head and in his right hand is the emblem of years his left hand is stretched out over a pool containing the eye of horus two the god uchat ura great green water with each hand extended over a pool that under his right hand is called lake of natron and that under his left hand lake of nitra three a pylon with doors called re stau the gate of the passages of the tomb four the uchat facing to the left above a pylon five the cow Ert, the eye of ra with disc and horns collar and manat and whip six a funeral chest from which emerge the head of ra and his two arms and hands each holding the emblem of life the chest which is called the district of abtu abadas or the burial place of the east has upon its sides figures of the four children of horus who protect the intestines of osiris or the deceased on the right stand tu amontef and keb hesenaf and on the left meshtha and hapi plate nine one figures of three gods who together with mestha hapi tua mountef and quebhensenuf are the seven khus referred to in line ninety nine of the text their names are meatefa karibekfa and heru kenti an maati or merti to the god ampu anubis jackal headed three figures of seven gods whose names are netchet netchet aarketket kenti hef ami unnut f tesher me a bes me a m ker and an m hru for the soul of ra in the form of a hawk with a disc on his head conversing in tattoo with the soul of osiris in the form of a human-headed bird wearing the white crown this scene is of the rarest occurrence plate ten one the cat emblematic of the sun cutting off the head of the serpent apep or apepi typical of darkness two three seated deities each holding a knife three ani and his wife thuthu kneeling in adoration before the god capera beetle-headed who is seated in the boat of the rising sun four two apes emblematic of the goddesses isis and nephthys five the god tem seated with the sun disc in the boat of the setting sun six the god rehu in the form of a lion seven the serpent uachit the lady of flame a symbol of the eye of ra coiled round a lotus flower above is the emblem of fire end of chapters eleven through seventeen one
chapter seventeen text here begin the praises and glorifyings of coming out from and of going into the glorious underworld which is in the beautiful amentet of coming out by day in all the forms of existence which please him the deceased of playing at draughts and sitting in the hall and of coming forth as a living soul saith osiris the scribe ani after he hath come to his haven of rest it is good for a man to recite this work whilst he is upon earth for then all the words of tem come to pass i am the god tem in rising i am the only one i came into existence in new i am ra who rose in the beginning the ruler of this who then is this it is ra when at the beginning he rose in the city of sutton henan heracleopolis magna crowned like a king in his rising the pillars of the god shu were not as yet created when he was upon the high ground of him that dwelleth in kemenu hermopolis magna i am the great god who gave birth to himself even nu who made his names to become the company of the gods as god who then is this it is ra the creator of the names of his limbs which came into being in the form of the gods who are in the train of ra i am he who is not driven back among the gods who then is this it is tem the dweller in his disc or as others say it is ra in his rising in the eastern horizon of heaven i am yesterday i know to-morrow who then is this yesterday is osiris and to-morrow is ra on the day when he shall destroy the enemies of neber chur and when he shall establish as prince and ruler his son horus or as others say on the day when we commemorate the festival of the meeting of the dead osiris with his father ra and when the battle of the gods was fought in which osiris the lord of amentet was the leader what then is this it is amentet that is to say the creation of the souls of the gods when osiris was leader in set amentet or as others say it is amentet which ra hath given unto me when any god cometh he doth arise and doeth battle for it i know the god who dwelleth therein who then is this it is osiris or as others say ra is his name or it is the phallus of ra wherewith he was united to himself i am the benu bird which is in anu heliopolis and i am the keeper of the volume of the book of things which are and of things which shall be who then is this it is osiris or as others say it is his dead body or as others say it is his filth the things which are and the things which shall be are his dead body or as others say they are eternity and everlastingness eternity is the day and everlastingness is the night i am the god amsu in his coming forth may his two plumes be set upon my head for me who then is this amsu is horus the avenger of his father and his coming forth is his birth the plumes upon his head are isis and nephthys when they go forth to set themselves there even as his protectors and they provide that which his head lacketh or as others say they are the two exceeding great uriae which are upon the head of their father tem or as others say his two eyes are the two plumes which are upon his head osiris ani the scribe of all the holy offerings riseth up in his place in triumph he cometh into his city what then is this it is the horizon of his father tem i have made an end of my shortcomings and i have put away my faults what then is this it is the cutting off of the corruptible in the body of osiris the scribe ani victorious before all the gods and all his faults are driven out what then is this it is the purification of osiris on the day of his birth i am purified in my great double nest which is in sutton henan heracleopolis magna on the day of the offerings of the followers of the great god who is therein what then is this millions of years is the name of the one nest great green lake is the name of the other a pool of natron and a pool of nitre or as others say the traverser of millions of years is the name of one great green lake is the name of the other or as others say the begetter of millions of years is the name of one great green lake is the name of the other now as concerning the great god who dwelleth therein it is ra himself 
i pass over the way i know the head of the pool of mayat what then is this it is re stau that is to say it is the underworld on the south of nearut f and it is the northern door of the tomb now as concerning the pool of mayat it is abtu abidas or as others say it is the boat by which his father tem travelleth when he goeth forth to second aru which he bringeth forth the food and nourishment of the gods who are behind their shrines now the gate of techesert is the gate of the pillars of shu the northern gate of the tuat underworld or as others say it is the two leaves of the door through which the god tem passeth when he goeth forth to the eastern horizon of heaven o ye gods who are in the presence of osiris grant me your arms for i am the god who shall come into being among you who then are these they are the drops of blood which came forth from the phallus of ra when he went forth to perform mutilation upon himself they sprang into being as the gods hu and sa who are in the following of ra and who accompany the god tem daily and every day i osiris the scribe ani triumphant have filled for thee the utchat after it had suffered failure on the day of the combat of the two fighters horus and set what then is this it is the day on which horus fought with set who cast filth in the face of horus and when horus destroyed the members of set now this thoth did with his own fingers i lift up the hair cloud when there are storms and quakings in the sky what then is this it is the right eye of ra which raged against set when he sent it forth thoth raised up the hair cloud and brought the eye alive and whole and sound and without defect to its lord or as others say it is the eye of ra when it is sick and when it weepeth for its fellow eye then thoth standeth up to cleanse it i behold ra who was born yesterday from the buttocks of the goddess meurt his strength is my strength and my strength is his strength what then is this it is the watery abyss of heaven or as others say it is the image of the eye of ra in the morning at his daily birth meurt is the eye uchat of ra therefore osiris the scribe ani triumphant is a great one among the gods who are in the train of horus the words are spoken for him that loveth his lord what then is this the gods who are in the train of horus are mestha hapi tu amatef and queb senef homage to you o ye lords of right and truth ye sovereign princes who stand behind osiris who utterly do away with sins and crimes and who are in the following of the goddess hetep Sekis, grant that i may come unto you destroy ye all the faults which are within me even as ye did for the seven khus who are among the followers of their lord Sepa. anubis appointed their place on the day when was said come therefore thither when then is this these lords of right and truth are thoth and astes the lord of amentet the sovereign princes who stand behind osiris even mestha hapi to amatef and queb senef are they who are behind the thigh in the northern sky now those who do utterly away with sins and crimes and who are in the following of hetep Sekis are the god sebek who dwelleth in the water the goddess hetep Sekis is the eye of ra or as others say it is the flame which followeth after osiris to burn up the souls of his enemies as concerning all the faults which are in osiris the scribe of the offerings of all the gods ani triumphant this is all that he hath done against the lords of eternity since he came forth from his mother's womb as concerning the seven khus even meshtha hapi tua mautef queb senef mea tef f carry back f and heru kenti on Maati. anubis appointed them to be protectors of the dead body of osiris or as others say set them behind the place of purification of osiris or as others say those seven khus are netche netche aquaquet and nerta nef besef kenti he f aker ami anut f tesher Maati ami het anus ubis hra per m ket ket and me am ker an f m pru the chief of the sovereign princes who are in 
naarat f is horus the avenger of his father as concerning the day upon which was said come therefore thither it referreth to the words come then thither which ra spake unto osiris lo may this be said unto me in amentet i am the divine soul which dwelleth in the two divine tchafi what then is this it is osiris when he goeth into tatu and findeth there the soul of ra there the one god embraceth the other and divine souls spring into being within the two divine tchafi as concerning the two divine chafi they are heru netch f and heru kent un maati or as others say the double divine soul which dwelleth in the two divine chafi is the soul of ra and the soul of osiris or as others say it is the soul which dwelleth in shu the soul which dwelleth in tefnut and these are the double divine soul which dwelleth in tatu i am the cat which fought hard by the persea tree in anu heliopolis on the night when the foes of neber chur were destroyed who then is this the male cat is ra himself and he is called mal by reason of his speech of the god sa who said concerning him he is like mal unto that which he hath made thus his name became maal or as others say it is the god shu who maketh over the possessions of seb to osiris as concerning the fight hard by the persea tree in anu it concerneth the children of impotent revolt when justice is wrought on them for what they have done as concerning the night of the battle these words refer to the inroad of the children of impotent revolt into the eastern part of heaven whereupon there arose a battle in heaven and in all the earth o thou who art in thine egg ra who shinest from thy disk and risest in thy horizon and dost shine like gold above the sky like unto whom there is none among the gods who sailest over the pillars of shu in the ether who givest blasts of fire from thy mouth who makest the two lands bright with thy radiance deliver thou the pious neb seni from the god whose form is hidden whose eyebrows are like unto the two arms of the balance on the night of reckoning destruction who then is this it is anaoth that is the god who bringeth his arm as concerning the night of reckoning destruction it is the night of the burning of the damned and of the overthrow of wicked at the block and of the slaughter of souls who then is this it is nemu the headsman of osiris who or as others say it is apep when he riseth up with one head bearing maat right and truth upon him or as others say it is horus when he riseth up with a double head whereof the one beareth right and truth and the other wickedness he bestoweth wickedness on him that worketh wickedness and right and truth upon him that followeth righteousness and truth or as others say it is horus the great who dwelleth in sechem letopolis or as others say it is thoth or as others say it is nephertem or as others say it is sept who doth thwart the axe of the foes of nebuchadnezzar deliver thou the scribe nebseni victorious from the watchers who bear slaughtering knives and who have cruel fingers and who slay those who are in the following of osiris may they never gain the mastery over me may i never fall under their knives what then is this it is anubis and it is horus in the form of kent an maati or as others say it is the sovereign princes who thwart the works of their weapons or as others say it is the chiefs of the shenniu chamber may their knives never gain the mastery over me may i never fall under their instruments of cruelty for i know their names and i know the being matchet who is among them in the house of osiris shooting rays of light from his eye but who himself is unseen he goeth round about heaven robed in the flame of his mouth commanding hapi but remaining himself unseen may i be strong upon earth before ra may i come happily into haven in the presence of osiris let not your offerings be wanting to me o ye who preside over your altars for i am among those who follow after nebuchadnezzar according to the writings of capera i fly as a hawk i cackle as a goose i ever slay even as the serpent goddess neheb ka what then is this those who preside over their altars are the similitude of the eye of ra and the similitude of the eye of horus o ra tem thou lord of the great house thou sovereign life strength and health of all the gods 
deliver thou the scribe nebseni victorious from the god whose face is like unto that of a greyhound whose brows are as those of a man and who feedeth upon the dead who watcheth at the bite of the lake of fire and who devoureth the bodies of the dead and swalloweth hearts and who shooteth forth filth but he himself remaineth unseen who then is this devourer for millions of years is his name and he liveth in the aat as concerning the aat it is that which is in an rut f hard by the shen eu chamber the unclean man who would walk thereover doth fall down among the knives or as others say his name is matis and he is the watcher of the door of amentet or as others say his name is beba and it is he who watcheth the bite of amentet or as others say heri sep f is his name hail lord of terror chief of the lands of the north and south thou lord of the red glow or red lands who preparest the slaughter block and who dost feed upon the inward parts who then is this the guardian of the bite of amentet what then is this it is the heart of osiris which is the devourer of all slaughtered things the uret crown hath been given unto him with gladness of heart as lord of Sutenhenen, heracleopolis magna what then is this he to whom hath been given the uret crown with gladness of heart as lord of Sutenhenen, is osiris he was bidden to rule among the gods on the day of the union of earth in the presence of neber chur what then is this he that was bidden to rule among the gods is horus the son of isis who was appointed to rule in the place of his father osiris as concerning the day of the union of earth with earth it is the mingling of earth with earth in the coffin of osiris the soul that liveth in sutton henen the giver of meat and drink the destroyer of wrong and the guide of the everlasting paths who then is this it is ra himself deliver thou the osiris nebseni victorious from the great god who carrieth away the soul who eateth hearts and who feedeth upon offal the guardian of the darkness the dweller in the succor boat those who live in crime fear him who then is this it is suddy or as others say it is smam ur the soul of seb hail kapera in thy boat the twofold company of the gods is thy body deliver thou osiris ani victorious from the watchers who give judgment who have been appointed by the god neber chur to protect him and to fasten the fetters on his foes and who slaughter in the shambles there is no escape from their grasp may they never stab me with their knives may i never fall helpless into their chambers of torture never have the things which the gods hate been done by me for i am pure within the mesket cakes of saffron have been brought unto him in tananet who then is this it is kapera in his boat it is ra himself as concerning the watchers who give judgment they are the apes isis and nephthys as concerning the things which are abominated by the gods they are wickedness and falsehood and he who passeth through the place of purification within the mesket is ampu anubis who is behind the chest which containeth the inward parts of osiris he to whom saffron cakes have been brought in tananet is osiris or as others say the saffron cakes in tananet are heaven and earth or as others say they are shu strengthener of the two lands in sutton henen heracleopolis magna the saffron cakes are the eye of horus the tananet is the burial place of osiris tem hath built thy house and the double lion god hath founded thy habitation lo drugs are brought and horus purifieth and set strengtheneth and set purifieth and horus strengtheneth the osiris the scribe ani victorious before osiris hath come into the land and he hath taken possession thereof with his two feet he is tem and he is in the city turn thou back o rehu whose mouth shineth whose head moveth turn thou back from before his strength or as others say turn thou back from him who keepeth watch and is unseen the osiris ani is safely guarded he is isis and he is found with her hair spread over him i shake it out over his brow he was conceived in isis and begotten in nephthys and they cut off from him the things which should be cut off fear followeth after thee terror is upon thine arms thou hast been embraced for millions of years by the arms of the nations mortals go round about thee thou smitest down the mediators of thy foes and thou seizest the arms of the powers of darkness the two sisters isis and nephthys 
are given to thee for thy delight thou hast created that which is in kur abba and that which is in anu heliopolis every god feareth thee for thou art exceeding great and terrible thou avengest every god on the man that curseth him and thou shootest out arrows thou livest according to thy will thou art uachit the lady of flame evil cometh among those who set themselves up against thee what then is this hidden in form granted of men who is the name of the tomb he seeth what is on his hand is the name of querau or as others say the name of the block now he whose mouth shineth and whose head moveth is the member of osiris or as others say of ra thou spreadest thy hair and shake it out over his brow is spoken concerning isis who hideth in her hair and draweth her hair over her uachit the lady of flames is the eye of ra chapter eighteen introduction vignette upper register the priest on mount f who wears a leopard skin and has on the right side of his head the lock of hair of herupakrat harpocrates introducing ani and his wife to the gods text the speech of samar f i have come unto you o great and godlike sovereign rulers who dwell in heaven and in earth and in the underworld and i have brought unto you osiris ani he hath not sinned against any of the gods grant ye that he may be with you all the time ani's speech the adoration of osiris the lord of Restau, and of the great company of the gods who dwell in the underworld by osiris the scribe ani who saith homage to thee o thou ruler of amentet un nefer in abtu abadas i have come unto thee and my heart beholdeth right and truth there is no sin in my body nor have i lied wittingly nor have i done aught with a false heart grant thou to me food in the tomb and that i may come forth into thy presence at the altar of the lords of right and truth and that i may enter into and come forth from the underworld and that my soul be not turned back and that i may behold the face of the sun and that i may behold the moon for ever and for ever vignette the priest sa meref who wears a leopard skin and has on the right side of his head the lock of hair of heru pa krat Hippocrates, introducing ani and his wife to the gods text the speech of sa meref i have come unto you o sovereign princes who dwell in Restau, and i have brought unto you osiris ani grant ye to him as to the followers of horus cakes and water and air and a homestead in Sekhet hetep ani's speech the adoration of osiris lord of everlastingness and of the sovereign princes the lords of Restau, by osiris the scribe ani who saith homage to thee o king of the underworld thou governor of akert i have come unto thee i know thy ways and i am furnished with the forms which thou takest in the underworld grant thou to me a place in the underworld near unto the lords of right and truth may my homestead be abiding in Sekhet hetep and i may receive cakes in thy presence chapter eighteen vignettes a pylon surmounted by feathers typical of maat and by uriai wearing discs and a pylon surmounted by ampu anubis or apuat and by an uchat text hail thoth who madest osiris victorious over his enemies make thou the scribe nebseni to be victorious over his enemies as thou didst make osiris victorious over his enemies in the presence of the sovereign princes who are with ra and osiris in anu heliopolis on the night of the things of the night and on the night of the battle and on the night of the shackling of the sabal fiends and on the day of the destruction of neber chur vignette the gods tem shu tefnut osiris and thoth text the great sovereign princes in anu are tem shu tefnut osiris and thoth and the shackling of the sabal fiends signifieth the destruction of the fiends of set when a second time he worketh evil hail thoth who madest osiris victorious over his enemies make thou the osiris ani to be victorious over his enemies in the presence of the great and sovereign princes who are in tatu on the night of making the tet to stand up in tatu 
vignette the gods osiris isis nephthys and horus text the great sovereign princes in tattu are osiris isis nephthys and heru netch hra tef now the night of making the tet to stand up in tattu signifieth the lifting up of the arm and shoulder of horus who dwelleth in sekum letopolis and these gods stand behind osiris to protect him even as do the swathings which clothe him hail thoth who madest osiris victorious over his enemies make thou osiris ani triumph over his enemies in the presence of the sovereign princes who are in sekum litopolis on the night of the things of the night festival in sekum vignette the gods osiris and horus the two uchats upon pylons and the god thoth text the great sovereign princes who are in sekum are heru kenti an maati and thoth who is with the sovereign princes in nerarut f now the night of the things of the night festival in sekum signifieth the light of the rising sun on the coffin of osiris hail thoth who madest osiris victorious over his enemies make thou the osiris ani triumph over his enemies in the presence of the great sovereign princes who are in pet and in tept and on the night of setting up the columns of horus and of making him to be established as the heir of the things which belong to his father osiris vignette the gods horus isis mestha and nephthys text the great sovereign princes who are in pet and tept are horus isis mestha and hapi now setting up the columns of horus signifieth the command given by set unto his followers set up columns upon it hail thoth who madest osiris victorious over his enemies make thou the osiris ani triumphant in peace victorious over his enemies in the presence of the great sovereign princes who are in the lands of rekhti on the night when isis lay down to keep watch in order to make lamentation for her brother osiris vignette the gods isis horus anpu anubis mestha and thoth text the great sovereign princes who are in the lands of rekhti are isis horus anubis mestha and thoth hail thoth who madest osiris victorious over his enemies make thou osiris the scribe ani triumphant in peace to be victorious over his enemies in the presence of the great sovereign princes who are in abtu abadas on the night of the god haker at the separation of the wicked dead at the judgment of the khus and at the rising up of joy in teni this vignette the gods osiris isis and apuat and the tet text the great sovereign princes who are in abtu are osiris isis and apuat hail thoth who madest osiris victorious over his enemies make thou osiris ani the scribe and teller of the sacred offerings of all the gods to be victorious over his enemies in the presence of the sovereign princes who judge the dead on the night of the carrying out of the sentence upon those who are to die vignette the gods thoth osiris on pu anubis and astenu text the great sovereign princes in the judgment of the dead are thoth osiris anubis and astenu now the carrying out of the sentence upon those who are to die is the withholding of that which is so needful to the souls of the children of impotent revolt hail thoth who madest osiris victorious over his enemies make thou osiris the scribe ani to be victorious over his enemies in the presence of the great sovereign princes on the festival of the breaking and turning up of the earth in tattu on the night of the breaking and turning up of the earth in their blood and of making osiris to be victorious over his enemies vignette the three gods of the festival of breaking up the earth in tattu text when the fiends of set come and change themselves into beasts the great sovereign princes on the festival of the breaking and turning up of the earth in tattu slay them in the presence of the gods therein and their blood floweth among them as they are smitten down these things are allowed to be done by them by the judgment of those who are in tattu hail thoth who madest osiris to triumph over his enemies make thou the osiris ani to be victorious over his enemies in the presence of the great sovereign princes who are in Nerarut f on the night of him who concealeth himself in divers forms even osiris vignette the gods ra osiris shu and bebi who is dog-headed 
text the great sovereign princes who are in na ararat f ar ra osiris shu and bebi now the night of him who concealeth himself in divers forms even osiris is when the thigh and the head and the heel and the leg are brought nigh unto the coffin of osiris un nefer hail thoth who madest osiris to triumph over his enemies make thou osiris ani to be victorious over his enemies in the presence of the great sovereign princes in re stau on the night when anubis lay with his arms and his hands over the things behind osiris and when horus was made to triumph over his enemies vignette the gods horus osiris isis and text the great sovereign princes in re stau are horus osiris and isis the heart of osiris rejoiceth and the heart of horus and therefore are the northern and southern parts of heaven at peace hail thoth who madest osiris victorious over his enemies make thou osiris ani the scribe and teller of the divine offerings of all the gods to triumph over his enemies in the presence of the ten companies of great sovereign princes who are with ra and with osiris and with every god and goddess in the presence of neb ur chur he hath destroyed his enemies and he hath destroyed every evil thing belonging unto him rubric this chapter being recited the deceased shall come forth by day purified after death and he shall make all the transformations which his heart shall dictate now if this chapter be recited over him he shall come forth upon earth he shall escape from every fire and none of the foul things which appertain unto him shall encompass him for eternity or for ever and ever chapter nineteen vignette the chapters without a vignette text the chapter of the chaplet of victory osiris al fank victorious born of sherat amsu victorious saith thy father tem hath woven for thee a beautiful chaplet of victory to be placed on thy living brow o thou who lovest the gods and thou shalt live for ever osiris kent amentet hath made thee to triumph over thine enemies and thy father seb hath decreed for thee all his inheritance come therefore o horus son of isis for thou o son of osiris sittest upon the throne of thy father ra to overthrow thine enemies for he hath ordained for thee the two lands to their utmost limits atem hath also ordained this and the company of the gods hath confirmed the splendid power of the victory of horus the son of isis and the son of osiris for ever and for ever and osiris alf ankh shall be victorious for ever and ever o osiris kent amentet the whole of the northern and southern parts of the heavens and every god and every goddess who are in heaven and who are upon earth will the victory of horus the son of isis and the son of osiris over his enemies in the presence of osiris kent amentet who will make osiris alf ankh victorious to triumph over his enemies in the presence of osiris kent amentet un nefer and the son of nut on the day of making him to triumph over set and his fiends in the presence of the great sovereign chiefs who are in anu heliopolis on the night of the battle and overthrow of the seba fiend in the presence of the great sovereign princes who are in abtu on the night of making osiris to triumph over his enemies make thou osiris alf ankh triumphant to triumph over his enemies in the presence of the great sovereign princes who are in the horizon of amentet and on the day of the festival of haker in the presence of the great sovereign princes who are in tatu on the night of the setting up of the tet in tatu in the presence of the great sovereign princes who are in the ways of the damned on the night of the judgment of those who shall be annihilated in the presence of the great sovereign princes who are in sekum latopolis and on the night of the things of the altars in sekum in the presence of the great sovereign princes who are in pei and tept on the night of the establishing of the inheriting by horus of the things of his father osiris in the presence of the great sovereign princes who are at the great festival of the ploughing and turning up of the earth in tatu or as others say in abtu on the night of the weighing of words or as others say weighing of locks in the presence of the great sovereign princes who are in an rut f on its place on the night when horus receiveth the birth chamber of the gods in the presence of the great sovereign princes who are in the lands of recti on the night when isis lieth down to watch and to make lamentation for her brother in the presence of the great sovereign princes who are in restyle on the night of making osiris to triumph over all his enemies 
horus repeated these words four times and all his enemies fell headlong and were overthrown and were cut to pieces and osiris alphonk triumphant repeated these words four times therefore let all his enemies fall headlong and be overthrown and cut to pieces horus the son of isis and son of osiris celebrated in turn millions of festivals and all his enemies fell headlong and were overthrown and cut to pieces their habitation hath gone forth to the block of the east their heads have been cut off their necks have been destroyed their thighs have been cut off they have been given over to the great destroyer who dwelleth in the valley of the grave and they shall never come forth from under the restraint of the god seb rubric this chapter shall be recited over the divine chaplet which is laid upon the face of the deceased and thou shalt cast incense into the fire on behalf of osiris alf ankh triumphant born of sherat amsu triumphant thus shalt thou cause him to triumph over his enemies dead or alive and he shall be among the followers of osiris and a hand shall be stretched out to him with meat and drink in the presence of the god this chapter shall be said by thee twice at dawn now it is a never-failing charm regularly and continually chapter twenty vignette this chapter in the theban version has neither vignette nor title text hail thoth who didst make osiris to triumph over his enemies snare thou the enemies of osiris the scribe nebseni the lord of piety in the presence of the great sovereign princes of every god and every goddess in the presence of the great sovereign princes who are in anu heliopolis on the night of the battle and of the overthrow of the sabal fiend in tatu on the night of making to stand up the double tet in sekum latopolis on the night of the things of the night in sekum in pe and in tepu on the night of the establishing of horus in the heritage of the things of his father in the double land of recti on the night when isis maketh lamentation at the sight of her brother osiris in abtu abydos on the night of the haker festival of the distinguishing between the dead the damned and the khus on the path of the dead the damned on the night of the judgment of those who are to be annihilated at the great festival of the ploughing and the turning up of the earth in nara rot f in Ristau, and on the night of making horus to triumph over his enemies horus is mighty the northern and southern halves of heaven rejoice osiris is content thereat and his heart is glad hail thoth make thou to triumph osiris the scribe nebseni over his enemies in the presence of the sovereign princes of every god and every goddess and in the presence of you ye sovereign princes who pass judgment on osiris behind the shrine in the saito recension this chapter has no vignette but it has the title another chapter of the chaplet of victory and is arranged in tabular form the words hail thoth make osiris alf ankh triumphant to triumph over his enemies even as thou didst make osiris to triumph over his enemies which are written in two horizontal lines are to be repeated before each column of text the great sovereign princes invoked are those of anu heliopolis tatu sekum latopolis pe and tep and arut f the double land of recti rastau abtu the paths of the dead the ploughing festival in tatu keraba osiris heaven and earth every god and every goddess the rubric reads if this chapter be recited regularly and always by a man who hath purified himself in water of natron he shall come forth by day after he hath come into port that is is dead and he shall perform all the transformations which his heart shall dictate and he shall come forth from every fire end of chapter seventeen through twenty chapters twenty one through thirty of the egyptian book of the dead by e a wallace budge this librivox recording is in the public domain twenty one in the papyrus of ani the twenty-first chapter follows the twenty-second but it is there given without title and without vignette in the turin papyrus published by lepsius the twenty-first and twenty-second chapters are quite distinct and each has its own title while a single vignette stands over both 
in the vignette a priest is shown holding a vase in the left hand and the ram-headed serpent-like instrument called ur hekau that is great of enchantments in the right with the latter he is about to touch the mouth of the deceased who is standing before him behind the deceased is a man seated on a chair and holding a staff in his left hand text the chapter of giving a mouth to the overseer of the house new triumphant in the underworld he saith homage to thee o thou lord of brightness thou who art at the head of the great house prince of the night and of thick darkness i have come unto thee being a pure coup thy two hands are behind thee and thou hast thy lot with thy ancestors o grant thou unto me my mouth that i may speak therewith and guide thou to me my heart at the season when there is cloud and darkness chapter twenty two vignette in the papyrus of nebseni the guardian of the balance is seen with his right hand stretched out to touch the mouth of the deceased who stands before him in other papyri the deceased himself is seen standing with either his right or his left hand raised to his mouth text the chapter of giving a mouth to osiris ani the scribe and teller of the holy offerings of all the gods triumphant in the underworld he saith i rise out of the egg in the hidden land may my mouth be given unto me that i may speak therewith in the presence of the great god the lord of the tuat underworld may my hand and my arm not be forced back in the presence of the sovereign princes of any god i am osiris the lord of ristal may i osiris the scribe ani triumphant have a portion with him who is on the top of the steps according to the desire of my heart i have come from the pool of fire and i have quenched the fire chapter twenty three vignette the statue of ani the scribe seated upon a pedestal in the form of the emblem of maat right and truth before it stands the sem priest clad in a panther's skin and holding in his right hand the ram-headed serpent-like instrument ur hekau with which he is about to touch the lips of the statue and so perform the ceremony of opening the mouth at his feet are a sepulchral box for holding unguents etc three instruments called respectively seb ur tun tet and tamanu and the object called peshen kef in the papyrus of nebseni the scene is described as the sem priest performing the ceremony of the opening of the mouth text the chapter of opening the mouth of osiris the scribe ani triumphant saith may the god ptah open my mouth and may the god of my city loose the swathings even the swathings which are over my mouth moreover may thoth being filled and furnished with charms come and loose the bandages even the bandages of set which fetter my mouth and may the god tem hurl them at those who would fetter me with them and drive them back may my mouth be open may my mouth be unclosed by shu with his iron knife wherewith he opened the mouth of the gods i am the goddess sekhet and i sit upon my place in the great wind of heaven i am the great goddess sa who dwelleth among the souls of anu heliopolis now as concerning every charm and all the words which may be spoken against me may the gods resist them and may each and every one of the company of the gods withstand them chapter twenty four vignette this chapter has no vignette in the theban papyri text the chapter of bringing charms unto osiris ani in the underworld he saith i am tem compara who brought himself into being upon the thigh of his divine mother those who are in nu the sky are made wolves and those who are among the sovereign princes are become hyenas 
behold i gather together the charm from every place where it is and from every man with whom it is swifter than greyhounds and quicker than light hail thou who towest along the mockant boat of ra the stays of thy sails and of thy rudder are taut in the wind as thou sailest up the pool of fire in the underworld behold thou gatherest together the charm from every place where it is and from every man with whom it is swifter than greyhounds and quicker than light the charm which created the forms of being from the mother and which either createth the gods or maketh them silent and which giveth the heat of fire unto the gods behold the charm is given unto me from wherever it is and from him with whom it is swifter than greyhounds and quicker than light or as others say quicker than a shadow chapter twenty five vignette in the greater number of the theban papyri this chapter is without vignette in the brockhurst papyrus however the sem priest wearing a panther's skin is seen holding up before the face of the deceased who stands before him a small bearded figure like an ushabti in the turin papyrus the priest and the deceased are standing facing each other and no ceremony is being performed text the chapter of making a man to possess memory in the underworld the chancellor-in-chief new triumphant the overseer of the palace the son of the chief chancellor amenhetep saith may my name be given to me in the great house and may i remember my name in the house of fire on the night of counting the years and of telling the number of the months i am with the divine one and i sit on the eastern side of heaven if any god whatsoever should advance unto me let me be able to proclaim his name forthwith chapter twenty six vignette the scribe ani clothed in white and with his heart in his right hand addressing the god anpu anubis jackal-headed in his left hand which is outstretched ani holds a necklace of several rows of coloured beads the clasp is made in the form of a pylon or gateway and on the side of the pendant which is in the same form is a representation of a scarab or beetle in a boat to typify the sun god Ra in his boat from the pendant hangs lotus flowers in other theban papyri the vignettes are different in the papyrus of nebseni the god anubis who dwelleth in the city of embalmment gives a heart to the deceased and in others the deceased is seen either being embraced by anubis or addressing his heart which rests upon a standard before him in the turn papyrus the deceased is seen kneeling before his own soul which is in the form of a human-headed hawk and clasping his heart to his breast with his left hand text the chapter of giving a heart to osiris ani in the underworld he saith may my heart ah be with me in the house of hearts may my heart hot be with me in the house of hearts may my heart be with me and may it rest there or i shall not eat of the cakes of osiris on the eastern side of the lake of flowers neither shall i have a boat wherein to go down the nile nor another wherein to go up nor shall i be able to sail down the nile with thee may my mouth be given to me that i may speak therewith and my two legs to walk therewith and my two hands and arms to overthrow my foe may the doors of heaven be opened unto me may seb the prince of the gods open wide his two jaws unto me may he open my two eyes which are blindfolded may he cause me to stretch apart my two legs which are bound together and may anpu anubis make my thighs firm so that i may stand upon them may the goddess Seket make me to rise so that i may ascend unto heaven and may that be done which i command in the house of the ka of ptah i understand with my heart i have gained the mastery over my heart i have gained the mastery over my two hands i have gained the mastery over my legs i have gained the power to do whatsoever my ka pleaseth my soul shall not be fettered to my body at the gates of the underworld but i shall enter in peace and i shall come forth in peace 
chapter twenty seven vignette the scribe ani with hands raised in adoration and his heart which is set upon a pedestal in the presence of four gods who are seated upon a pedestal in the form of the emblem of maat in the turin papyrus the deceased is shown kneeling before the four children of horus text the chapter of not letting the heart hati of a man be taken from him in the underworld saith osiris ani hail ye who carry away hearts hail ye who steal hearts and who make the heart of a man to go through its transformations according to his deeds let not what he hath done harm him before you homage to you o ye lords of eternity ye possessors of everlastingness take ye not this heart of osiris ani into your grasp this heart of osiris and cause ye not words of evil to spring up against it because this is the heart of osiris ani triumphant and it belongeth unto him of many names thoth the mighty one whose words are his limbs and who sendeth forth his heart to dwell in his body the heart of osiris ani is triumphant it is made new before the gods he hath gained power over it he hath not been spoken to according to what he hath done he hath gotten power over his own members his heart obeyeth him he is the lord thereof it is in his body and it shall never fall away therefrom i osiris the scribe ani victorious in peace and triumphant in the beautiful amenta and on the mountain of eternity bid thee to be obedient unto me in the underworld chapter twenty eight vignette in some papyri containing the theban recension of the book of the dead this chapter has no vignette in the papyrus of nefer uben f the deceased is seen holding his heart upon his breast with his left hand and kneeling before a tailed monster in human form who holds a knife in his right hand and grasps his tail with the left another papyrus shows the deceased offering incense to osiris who standing on a pedestal in the form of maat holds the flail and sceptre in his hands in the brocklehurst papyrus the deceased is kneeling and holding his heart in his left hand which is outstretched in the turin papyrus the deceased is adoring his heart which is placed on a pedestal before a seated deity text the chapter of not letting the heart of the overseer of the palace the chancellor-in-chief new triumphant be carried away from him in the underworld he saith hail thou lion god i am the flower bush unb that which is an abomination unto me is the divine block let not this my heart be carried away from me by the fighting gods in anu hail thou who dost wind bandages round osiris and who hast seen set hail thou who returnest after smiting and destroying him before the mighty ones this my heart sitteth and weepeth for itself before osiris it hath made supplication for me i have given unto him and i have decreed unto him the thoughts of the heart in the house of the god usek ra and i have brought to him sand at the entry to kemenu hermopolis magna let not this my heart be carried away from me i make thee to dwell upon his throne o thou who joinest together hearts in sekhet hetep with years of strength against all things that are an abomination unto thee and to carry off food from among the things which belong unto thee and are in thy grasp by reason of the twofold strength and this my heart is devoted to the decrees of the god tem who leadeth me into the dens of sudi but let not this my heart which hath done its desire before the sovereign princes who are in the underworld be given unto him when they find the leg and the swathings they bury them chapter twenty nine vignette ani standing with a staff in his hand in the turin papyrus this chapter has no vignette text the chapter of not letting the heart of a man be taken away from him in the underworld osiris ani triumphant saith turn thou back o messenger of every god is it that thou art come to carry away this my heart which liveth 
but my heart which liveth shall not be given unto thee as i advance the gods hearken unto my offerings and they all fall down upon their faces in their own places chapter twenty nine a vignette this chapter has no vignette text the chapter of not allowing the heart of amen hetep triumphant to be carried away dead in the underworld the deceased saith my heart is with me and it shall never come to pass that it shall be carried away i am the lord of hearts the slayer of the heart i live in the right and truth mayat and i have my being therein i am horus the dweller in hearts who is within the dweller in the body i live in my word and my heart hath being let not my heart be taken away from me let it not be wounded and may neither wounds nor gashes be dealt upon me because it hath been taken away from me let me have my being in the body of my father seb and in the body of my mother nut i have not done that which is held in abomination by the gods let me not suffer defeat there but let me be triumphant chapter twenty nine b vignette a heart text chapter of a heart of carnelian osiris ani triumphant saith i am the benu the soul of ra and the guide of the gods in the tuat underworld their divine souls come forth upon earth to do the will of their cause let therefore the soul of osiris ani come forth to do the will of his ka chapter thirty vignette the deceased with hands raised in adoration standing before a beetle placed on a pedestal text the chapter of not letting the heart of a man be driven away from him in the underworld osiris auf ankh triumphant born of sherat amsu triumphant saith my heart my mother my heart my mother my heart of my existence upon earth may not stand up to oppose me in judgment may there be no opposition to me in the presence of the sovereign princes may no evil be wrought against me in the presence of the gods may there be no parting of thee from me in the presence of the great god the lord of amentet homage to thee o thou heart of osiris kent amentet homage to you o my reigns homage to you o ye gods who dwell in the divine clouds and who are exalted or holy by reason of your sceptres speak ye fair words for the osiris auf ankh and make ye him to prosper before nehebka and behold though i be joined unto the earth and am in the mighty innermost part of heaven let me remain on the earth and not die in amentet and let me be a coup therein for ever and ever rubric this chapter shall be recited over a basalt scarab which shall be set in a gold setting and it shall be placed inside the heart of the man for whom the ceremonies of opening the mouth and of anointing with unguent have been performed and there shall be recited by way of a magical charm the words my heart my mother my heart my mother my heart of transformations chapter thirty a vignette in many of the papyri containing the theban recension this chapter has no vignette in one however the vignette is a heart standing above a vase in another the deceased is seen adoring his heart and in another the deceased is standing before four gods one of whom is offering a heart to him text the chapter of not letting the heart of the overseer of the palace the chancellor-in-chief new triumphant be driven away from him in the underworld he saith o my heart my mother o my heart my mother o my heart of my existence upon earth may not stand up to oppose me in judgment in the presence of the lords of the trial let it not be said of me and of that which i have done he hath done deeds against that which is right and true may not be against me in the presence of the great god the lord of amentet homage to thee o my heart homage to thee o my heart homage to you o my reigns homage to you o ye gods who dwell in the divine clouds and who are exalted or holy by reason of your sceptre speak ye for me fair things to ra and make ye me to prosper before nehebka and behold me even though i be joined to the earth in the mighty innermost parts thereof let me remain upon the earth and let me not die in amentet but become a coup therein chapter thirty b vignette 
some papyri containing the theban recension give this chapter without any vignette and it is probable that this arises from the fact that it often appears as one of the texts which occur in the great judgment scene where it forms the prayer put into the mouth of the deceased see the papyrus of ani and the papyrus of hu nefer in the papyrus of nebseni the deceased kneels in one pan of the balance and he is being weighed against his heart which rests in the other in the presence of osiris the great god the governor of everlastingness the support of the beam is surmounted by a human head and the tongue of the balance is being scrutinized by a dog-headed ape seated on a pedestal who is called thoth the lord of the balance elsewhere this ape is seated on a pedestal with steps and is called the lord of kemenu hermopolis magna the righteous weigher in the papyrus of amenneb the deceased stands by the balance while a figure of himself is being weighed against his heart in this example of the scene the support of the beam is surmounted by the head of a jackal elsewhere the vignette is simply a heart or a scarab or the deceased seated adoring his heart or the deceased standing in adoration before a beetle which is the symbol of the god capera the self-created god and the type of the resurrection text the chapter of not letting the heart of osiris the scribe of the holy offerings of all the gods ani triumphant be driven from him in the underworld he saith my heart my mother my heart my mother my heart whereby i came into being may not stand up to oppose me at my judgment may there be no opposition to me in the presence of the sovereign princes Tchacha. may there be no parting of thee from me in the presence of him that keepeth the balance thou art my ka the dweller in my body the god kenemu who knitteth and strengtheneth my limbs mayest thou come forth into the place of happiness whither we go may the shenet the divine officers of the court of osiris who form the conditions of the lives of men not cause my name to stink let it be satisfactory unto us and let the listening be satisfactory unto us and let there be joy of heart unto us at the weighing of words let not that which is false be uttered against me before the great god the lord of amentet verily how great shalt thou be when thou risest in triumph rubric these words are to be said over a scarab of green stone encircled with a band of refined copper and having a ring of silver which shall be placed on the neck of the ku this chapter was found in the city of kemenu hermopolis magna under the feet of the statue of this god it was inscribed upon a slab of iron of the south in the writing of the god himself in the time of the majesty of the king of the north and of the south men Kaura triumphant by the royal son heru ta ta f who discovered it whilst he was on his journey to make an inspection of the temples and of their estates in some ancient papyri the text of this chapter is made to follow the rubric of chapter sixty four with which it had some close connection and in others it follows the rubric of chapter one hundred and eighteen the rubrical direction concerning chapter sixty four reads behold make a scarab of green stone wash it with gold and place it in the heart of a man the deceased and it will perform for him the opening of the mouth anoint it with unto unguent and recite over it as a charm the following words my heart my mother my heart my mother etc in the turn papyrus it follows chapter thirty which contains parts of chapters thirty a and thirty b End of chapters twenty one through thirty